Yeah, hi. Oh, fuck, I forgot my iPad. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, alrighty there. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is time for your very late night. It's kind of really early morning. I NXT review. Um, I didn't review this earlier because I had stuff to do. So now, but now I have the time to basically do it, even though it's very late night, but whatever. Uh, so let's talk about freaking NXT. So, because it's a show that apparently matters now. Or apparently, you know, Smarks now, they think, you know, NXT, or, you know, I'm not a fan of NXT 2.0 because if it's the man's in charge or whatever. That's literally why. Even though Shawn Michaels is part of creative and shit like that, so. Uh, it is what it is there. Uh, but you know, because Triple H apparently, because apparently, you know, how dare they not have Triple H involved? You know, Triple H, he, uh, he is the reason why NXT was good or whatever. You know, he, if it's a, like, I have a video about this coming up, I guess, in relates to the whole Tony Khan shit. Not Tony Khan, the Nick Khan thing. Actually, think about it, I should probably just make a video about that NXT thing about Triple H. You know, I technically did already. But the reality is Triple H, even though I love Triple H, his vision of NXT doesn't draw ratings. Let's be honest here. Anyways, grab your Coca-Cola, shake my news right there. Oh shit, oh shit, there. Is this the truth? Alright. Cheers, uh, motherfuckers. Alright, let's talk about this. And besides, I, I, what I'm pretty sure is like Triple H, like, he, like he's gonna be still in charge once he comes back, so it's like not big of a deal, so. But apparently, you know, because Vince McMahon in charge, that's a problem, you know? Anyway, so NXT started with Tommaso Ciampa defeating some guy named Grayson Waller. I just hope this match was too long or whatever. The camera guy Grimes gets a new look. Grimes says he kept his hair and beard for the same for years to remember his humble beginnings from Carolina, and but last week Duke Hudson cut his hair and proposes a hair versus hair match at NXT War Games, and Duke accepts the challenge. I guess that's a reason for this match, even though it's kind of indie-ish, but whatever. Speaking of indie, Indy Hartwell. Says her husband, Dexter Lubis, has a fractured hand injury and will be out of action for a month. Fuck. <laughs> Fracture. Oh, man. That sucks. Sounds like she's, like, sad or whatever. Then Casey Cartazaro and Caden Carter defeated Indy Hartwell and Brescia Perra. Whoever the fuck they are. I don't care. Santos Escobar defeats uh, squ some jobber or squashes Malik, whatever, Blade. Then Kyle O'Reilly and... Von Wagner versus Jordan Wilde and Raul Magazzaro is announced. Winner will face Imperium for the NXT Tag Titles at NXT War Games. Um, or whatever. Um, what doesn't fucking. Uh, I read earlier about the match card. Like, didn't like Kyle O'Reilly and Von Wagner already have a title match? Like, whatever. I don't know. I guess they're gonna win. Then Cora Jade defeats Manny Rose with a roll-up after Kaylee Ray comes out and causes a distraction. Wait, what? Did that actually happen? Damn. Um, hey, this Cora Jade chick is actually pretty cute, too. I guess I will say this. This is the only match to care about because it actually has hot women wrestling. You know? So... God forbid we have two hot women. To me, that's better than Charlotte versus Becky Lynch there. It really is. Because at least they're attractive chicks. And again, apparently it talks of NXT becoming TV-14. If you want to become TV-14, you gotta have them doing some hot shit. I'm telling you, Mandy Rose and whatever. And fucking Cora Jade even. Why not? Then Joe Gacy wants a shot. Okay, I read this online. Okay, I missed it. I missed most of the show. I only came home with like the last 10 minutes. I read this online. And I thought this was hilarious. I can't wait to talk about it. 
So Joe Gacy wants a shot against Roderick Strong for the Cruiserweight title. Joe, Joe Gacy says Roderick Strong name alone is an example of toxic masculinity. And the Cruiserweight title is an example of an exclusive city and weight shaming. Strong says his next money match is with Gacy. And tells Malcolm Bivens to make it happen. And Bivens says the contract for the match will be signed, sealed, and delivered to NXT War Games. And Strong will beat Gacy like a Lon John track. I don't know how that makes sense. But I think Joe Gacy is a fucking hilarious guy. I am liking his gimmick. That is like... that. That's good. Like, you know... That's actually a good gimmick. So, you know, just freaking hit. Like, he should have fucking... What he should have done, he should have fucking says, like, you know... Oh, yeah, he, oh, he did say freaking... Oh, he did say, mate. Like, he should say, like, you know... Oh, empower strongness. Men are being strong, you know? Like, I don't know what he did, but, like... That's pretty cool, you know? The NXT Women's War Games match will be Toxic Attraction and Dakota Kai versus Io Shirai, Raquel Gonzalez, Cora Jade, and Kaylee Ray. Uh, whatever, <laughs> you know. Then Evie Niles defeated Yuselina Lion, whatever the fuck, some job or bitch, but no one cares. Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen defeat the Grizzled Young Vets, whatever. Uh, it's, this is set for next week, guys. Kaylee Ray versus Dakota Kai in a War Games Advantage ladder match. Like, that's gonna draw any viewership. I just said a ladder match, right? Wow. But, like, really? Like, a women's ladder match and freaking just... Really, this is just stupid. Uh, like, I'm not saying, like, oh, you know, why? Oh, you don't want to see a good match? Like, listen, I like ladder matches the next guy. But, like... War games, you know, how is this like something for an advantage, you know, wouldn't it make sense? I mean, I understand like, oh, you know, people want to see matches and shit, like whatever, I get it, like wrestling, you know. But like, in terms of the story, like, shouldn't you build to this more? And should it just be a random thing? Like, you didn't, back when war games was a thing, you know, in WCW and shit like that, they didn't need to do this crap that, oh, they're gonna have a, a ladder match or whatever, you know? Because wouldn't that make them look like, like, the ladder match is going to make them weak. Like, in storyline-wise, they're going to be weak for the match. You know, I'm just saying. Whatever. Roger Strong versus Joe Gacy will happen one week from... Yeah, will happen at War Games. It's official. Uh, and the main event, Carmelo Hayes defeats John Johnny Gagarno and Pete Dunne in a triple threat match to retain his North American title with some help of Donny Tiangelo. After the match, um, basically... They, uh, the 2.0 guys were beating up the uh, the 1.0, but then Tommaso Ciampa came out and then, oh, oh my god! Oh, DIY! DIY! Like, all oh, fucking smarts were jizzing their pants, like, DIY, guys! Like, who gives a fuck? Like, really? That, what kind of tag team name is DIY? So Tommaso Ciampa helps Johnny Gagano, he saves him, and then, you know, they pick him, he picks him up. And then this, yeah, and then Braun, uh, Braun Breaker comes out. Braun Breaker, uh, again, he's, I don't think he's a heel, right? Like, he's not a heel, but he's, like, aligned with these, the, the, the people who are the 2.0 guys, right? Like, Tony Tiangelo, uh, who else? And some jobber that no one knows, Two Hudson, or whatever, the, is that him? I don't even know. Basically, some guy who's feuding Eli Drake, and, um... Carmelo Hayes. He comes out and says, War Games! And then, fuck it. Uh, yeah, like, or, or I say, War Games! Like, let's just say, let's say it like that. He say it like, War Games! Like, I don't know, you know, the whole squeaky voice, like Scott Steiner. So, he says, War Games. Then the, and then the commentary says, It's old school versus new school. And the battle I've been drawn, or whatever. If you really think about it, this has a, I mean, I don't give a shit about NXT like that, right? I don't give a shit in terms of indie shit. But it's in the, heading to the right direction. If you really think about it, the, the, their team match, their war games match, they were just like a freaking tag team match, right? The tag team... It makes more sense 
than fucking Raw vs. SmackDown Survivor Series. Because you had Braun Breaker, who has some fucking issues with Tommaso Ciampa, even though he's a face, for some, but I, I don't know. But then fucking, you know, Johnny Gagano, he has issues with the other guy. Basically, every guy has an issue for each other, which it makes sense in terms of this match happening at War Games. You know? This makes more sense as a Survivor Series match. But the fact they're doing it in War Games makes you actually intrigued. So in a way, I'm actually intrigued for once in an NXT match. So I actually am intrigued. You know, I never thought being intrigued in a Johnny Gagano match, but hey, I'm intrigued. So, or even a Carmelo Hayes, because I don't really give a shit about that guy, or some other guy that's feuding me like Drake, but I'm intrigued. So, it's old school, new school. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, it's an old school kind of idea, you know, veteran versus rookies and shit. But it's also like, you know, they're brawling, oh yeah, they were brawling in a show. I thought, was, you know what, it's pretty cool. Them brawling, you know, a little bit. It makes more sense than what happened in Survivor Series. Or the reason why it has more better build-up than Survivor Series. And this is NXT. It's just like something I wish that Survivor Series had. Like, I don't like... I mean, heck, it would be so cool. Like, imagine if Survivor Series, they were to have a War Game style uh, Survivor Series... Like, a Survivor Series, traditional Survivor Series style War Games match. Like, but in the war games, fucking, like, you know, just a war game style Survivor Series match. Heck, they could do it with this, honestly. Even though they don't need to. Like, they could just do the regular war games match. Again, I will say this. Again, I am still irritated that war games, like, the current war games match, it doesn't have the roof. Which, again, like, oh, if you skip, you got you disqualify yourself. Even though they use weapons and whatever. I think it's retarded. But... I don't know, I just wish they could add a roof in the end, because it's basically just a giant steel cage, so. But, at the end of the day, I am actually intrigued with this idea, so. Good job, NXT, you actually make me intrigued about something. And you're actually you are a little bit intrigued that why is Braun Breaker aligning himself with them, but you know, it doesn't really matter, because they're a feud, even though it's... But they're gonna pop, uh, but the thing is, you gotta think about it. Are they gonna pop? They're gonna probably do this shit. Oh, can it get along? Cause watch, cause isn't fucking Pete Dunne a heel and Eli Drake a heel? You know? Are they, are, and they, are, like, cause you gotta think about it. They're gonna probably do that kind of shit where, could they coexist? So that's my worry. I actually just thought of that right now. But, anyways, that was NXT for you. Very kind of int intriguing ending. Uh, that was actually pretty cool. But entire show, I can't really say much. I can say, like, you know, much of the show, like, no, no one really gives a fuck, right? But, hey. The ending of that show was pretty cool. And you got Manny Rose and Cora Jade. That's they invited my big black cats. That's all I want to say. I'm just keep real, you know, get your game, drink your coals, my new ceiling, and fire to make some bitches go, oh shit, oh shit. It's better, it's more better than just, I don't know, watching stupid wrestling, but it is what it is. Alright, till next time. Peace. Yeah, bye, people.